Oh look, my hair has changed. Only, has it changed? Or is that just your imagination? In fact, does anything actually exist? Or is it just a figment of our minds? Realism is the concept that all entities, from radiators, USB drives and tortoises, to blazars, quasars and black holes, all exist independent of an observer. By that, I mean they don't need someone watching them or hearing them to actually materialise. However, there are two concepts that actually go against realism, and both come under anti-realism. The first is idealism, developed in part by Leibowitz, which holds that ideas are the only things known. We are not aware of objects or entities themselves, only the sensations that they give us. Under idealism, every mind supposedly experiences reality in different ways. Perhaps two different people can see colours differently, or smell different scents differently. This idea actually holds up very well to scientific understanding. We know that sensations are the only things that we can know and that we ever will know. This is because when you look at an object, what you're seeing is your brain's interpretation of the information sent by your eyes. And when you hear something, you're not actually hearing the sound itself, only an interpretation from the information sent by your ears. You cannot, and never will, experience the universe firsthand. This collection of sensations is commonly referred to as the phaneron, and it's all that you or I will ever know. Now, imagine that your phaneron is the only thing that exists in the entire universe. In a way, that would mean that your phaneron is the universe. Under this hypothetical situation, every person that you see and interact with who should have a phaneron of their own is a creation of your own phaneron. And that would apply to every object and every sound and every sight. Everything that you witness is created by your brain or your phaneron. This idea is known as solipsism, the notion that the self is the only thing in the universe. It's quite a lonely concept, one that I wouldn't want to hold. But I bet a lot of you are wondering, what actually separates solipsism from idealism fundamentally? I mean, they both state that ideas are the only things known, and that the only thing that we'll ever experience is our own phaneron. Let's compare the reactions of an idealist and a solipsist to an oncoming train. The idealist would state that all the passengers on the train can see the train and hear the train, but they might have a different interpretation of the train than the idealist. They may also state that the train wouldn't exist if they or any of the passengers weren't there to observe it. The solipsist would argue that the train doesn't exist at all, whether observing it or not. So do idealists and solipsists have a point, or is their argument unrational and dismissible without any evidence? Well, as I've stated before, it is completely possible that objects do not exist outside of the field of view of an observer, but there's no way to know for sure unless we actually conduct an experiment. We'd have to know the difference between an object that's being observed and an object that isn't being observed. One such experiment was conducted in Israel in 1998. Its researchers developed a tiny object less than a thousandth of a millimetre in size. Inside it, it had two tiny slits or openings that a particle could slip through. A current of electrons was fired towards these slits, one at a time, going at random angles, and a quantum observer was placed by the slit to observe the presence of an electron. Bear in mind that this observer would never touch the current of electrons. It had no effect on the electrons apart from the fact that it was observing them. The variable of this experiment was that observer. It was either on or off. After the electrons passed through the slits, they would hit a wall. The pattern that the electrons left on the wall was then measured. Now for the findings. When the observer was switched off, this is the pattern that was left. This alone is bizarre. It shows that the stream of electrons is acting like a wave, even though they're fired one at a time, it looks as if the electron is actually going through both slits, interacting with itself, and causing an interference pattern like a wave. Physicists have been just completely baffled by it. Let's move on. But what happened when they switched on the observer? When the observer was switched back on, this is the pattern. It shows that the electrons actually went back to acting like particles instead of waves, just because they were observed. Now, I'm going to dedicate, like, a few seconds for just how mind-blowing that finding is. Okay.
These findings may not show that reality is non-existent, but it definitely shows that our perception of reality is unverifiable and unreliable, at least on a sub-micron level. So idealists have kind of got it right, in that ideas are the only consistent things in the universe. But then maybe solipsists have got it right. Maybe you are the only person in the universe, and maybe I don't exist. And realists? They're practical. They make the assumption that stuff exists because it's just easier to get stuff done. So maybe we'll never have the answer to the question, does anything actually exist? Our phaneron literally makes it impossible to ever know anything. Everything that any of us have ever known is just an assumption. I'm going to end on a positive note in saying that the best way to live your life is to assume that there is stuff out there beyond your phaneron, stuff that you can actually influence. You'll live a good life of compassion for others and concern for your own well-being, because under realism you really do believe that your actions have consequences on others, regardless of whether or not they actually do. At the end of it all, it really makes no difference whether anything actually exists or not. Live with yourself happily.